Adriana. Talk to me. Hello. What's going on with her this season? What's her big story? Um, she gets a, you get a little bit more personal into her personal life. You get to see how she interacts in, uh, in her, her relationships. You actually catch her with a girlfriend this season. And you get into her, you know, in her home. And you get um, to see how, how they interact with one another. Um, and you also see, you know, how, how she's um, dealing with um, the struggles that she has this season, which are, you know, kind of what she's ambitious and what she's passionate about and, and chasing these very dark and deep stories. But that can also very much affect her personal life or whether she wants to, you know, go with love and, and go down that path, and, 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 uh, which is what everybody eventually wants. But, you know, she wants to figure out what accomplishments, accomplishments she wants to accomplish. Well, she also had one of the most beautiful friendships in her season, her and Daniel Fry. It was unexpected that they would actually start to, like, you know, work well together. Yes. You also get to see that. You get to see if she really, truly is a good friend to him or if it's just a self-hitting sort of uh, loathe even towards him, like, God, get yourself together type of deal. Or if it's a genuine, like, you know, uh, uh, just trying to understand who he is, you know, as a person. So, I mean, you, you get to see Adriana, um, you know, be, be which she is, and I feel she's very nonchalant, very, you know, monotone all the time. She has, like, one one volume, and that's it. So you get to see very different uh, different dynamics, which is great. What was interesting is she seemed to be the only person that gave a damn about him, and she was tenacious about it. She's like, dude, we're going to clean you up. We're going to yes. save your life. Yes. <laughs> and, again, I feel like it comes back to the original pilot when he's going off and, and listing his, his resume. He's like, I worked for the New York Times, and I worked for here, and I worked for there. And, and in my mind, I'm like, I know. To do. I'm a, how do I get there? I know I don't have to be a drunken mess. That's how I get here. You know, to the El Paso Times and, and you know, lose all these other great jobs. So I think I think she just wants to learn from him, and she wants to learn how he got to where he did, and and, and even how you know, even the downfall, you know, and maybe not how not to go down that path. So you get to see, you know, her as a, as a person, which is great. Should she be a little bit afraid about these paths that she's embarking on? So like, you know, just gleefully almost. <laughs> chase the story. I mean, chase it, which is great because we need these stories to be told. And we're, in a sense, right here being a voice for those voiceless people who aren't able to tell their story. But uh, these are stories that, that everybody who is a part of these stories and, and every journalist out there who's truly, you know, talking about these movies. We have a writer on this show who talks on topics like that. His name is Damien Cave and he also writes for the New York Times. I mean, they put themselves in the line of fire literally to get these stories. So I, I hope, I hope